morning. This is my shh. My coffee and I are having a moment. And then it says, I will deal with you later. Um, Lisa gave this to me for Christmas one year. Her friend Sarah made it. Sarah doesn't make them right now. Um, this body needs something. And I thought maybe coffee might be it. So I thought I would just come and talk to you just in case. Um, I said I wouldn't post this. And if you see it, it's not going to be until... Friday because I actually vlogged yesterday so long that I actually decided to put it into two videos. I've just been kind of kind of dealing with lots of things and so are my friends. So it's like having somebody to talk to um, isn't as um, as available as in the past. I just realized I don't have my headphones on. Look, I got a new headphone. Well, it's not new to me. I bought it at uh, in Texas a couple years, two years ago, a year and a half ago, last year. Um, it's a unicorn, but the carabiner was broken. Hold on, we didn't connect. Okay, there we go. Um, she's really cute. The tops always come off of these. Um. That's what's happened to the last three. I just lose the tops. Um, but I just, she, she's super cute. And I figured while I'm not actually throwing it in my purse and traveling with it, I can might as well just like, cute, she's so cute. I also needed, what happened was my phone cover broke. Um, and I needed to get a new phone cover. So when I picked out the pink, I've got this pink silicone one that I got at Five Below. And then I was like, ooh, what pop socket could I put with it? I was thinking about like that really cute pink um, Buffalo Check one, but that's like a dark pink. This is like a pale pink, like that almost. Bubblegum pink. This is pale pink. That's bubblegum pink. I have one that says, um... oh, I'm going to turn you around now because I want to read it. It says, God. Sorry. Please look at my coffee and water while I read the pop socket. Oh, it says God is good. So you say all the time. You say all the time, God is good. You guys know that? That, uh... <sighs> so, I feel like I'm going to ramble because I wanted to tell you... Um, I didn't hear from my doctor yesterday, which I usually give her 24 hours. Because I said, I've told you guys before, I didn't message her to the end of the day on Monday. And a lot of times they don't read their messages till the end of the day if they're not urgent medical messages. So um, I'm gonna call today after I get off the phone. It's just I'm it this I'm vlogging earlier than the clinic is open. When you get up at five o'clock, by the time it's seven thirty, you feel like it's like you know midnight. But last night I slept pretty good. It was broken, but it was good. And this morning I woke up in a lot of pain. So I was kind of like not having a theory, but I wonder if, okay, let me tell you what's going on. I asked the doctor to just give me something for the days when it's a lot of pain and I can sleep. So she did, she prescribed Tylenol codeine, not a lot. I know they can be addictive and I'll tell you why, especially, but I, I they know they can be addictive, uh, but I've, had no problem with it before I've every time I get oral surgery they give me Tylenol codeine so it's not like you know you know whatever I think the fact that you that I slept and I don't move around creates like the stiffness a little bit you know it's almost like tossing and turning isn't good because then you don't rest but then laying sedentary in your sleep doesn't help either because then you get like lock joints and lock muscles and stuff so I actually woke up at 3.30 and I was like, oh, it's 3.30. I can take my gabapentin, which I know I mentioned to you yesterday, I think, or the day before. It was yesterday's vlog, so I don't know if you saw it today or you'll see it tomorrow. It's what I talked to you yesterday that posts on Wednesday and Thursday. But I was talking about how the gabapentin is... 
because it's a pain medication, it's best set at eight hours apart. But because of the way we sleep, um, now that Jimmy's like going to bed early, going to bed early, waking up early, then I don't really have eight hours because if I take it at seven with my night meds, because we're asleep by eight, then it's due again at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. actually, if I take it at seven. When I was taking it at eight, it was due at 4 a.m. and I didn't want my alarm to go off at 4 a.m. to remind me. So I had just set the five o'clock alarm and I said to myself, if I'm ever up at four when I was taking it at eight or up at three when I take it at seven, I was like, I'll just take it. And I was, I woke up at 3.30 and, I'm, and I know it was the pain that woke me up. It's kind of weird, but that's what's been happening, so. And then I ended up falling like right back to sleep, which is so unusual for me. Like I woke up, took a pill and then went like right back to sleep, which I, I appreciate, but it was very unusual. So I tell, I'm telling you that because this morning I'm in an unusual amount of pain and discomfort. I haven't had this level. It's not, okay, it's not 911, call your doctor and get more pain meds. I'm just talking to you guys, okay? Just hear me out. Uh, I feel like personally I have to try to build up a little bit of tolerance because I have to deal with my my, my knee and I have to like learn to live with the hip pain for a while because I feel like my knee is going to be like the most or my femur is going to be like where it's happening at the most. So um, I've been doing leg lifts but like keeping my knee in a steady position just like trying to get my hip rotated just to get my hip moving. I got my I've gotten my leg independently like because Jimmy will help me do leg lifts I'll get my leg all the way up without pain but the mu using the muscles I get my leg about I don't know about two feet off the bed now I it was you know slow it was, first it was hardly at all and then now it's like two feet off the bed um I wonder if I could actually do it you wouldn't see me I don't think um but anyway the the um amount of pain that I'm in today is exceptional it's like almost pre-medication it's almost like just the medic the pain that i was on when i was just taking regular ibuprofen um i don't know why i actually was kind of contemplating what my diet was yesterday and my diet was really good yesterday um then i was thinking uh, the day before so the day we went to the doctor's appointment um, the day we went for the MRI, I really couldn't eat. I had like a tablespoon of peanut butter in the morning with my meds. Um, but I really couldn't eat. Like I just, I didn't want to have anything on my, I think I told you guys this. I didn't want to have anything on my stomach in case I had a bad reaction to like the contrast. Well, Jimmy had dropped me home and went back out to get his ID for his job. And at his job is a Chick-fil-A. There's actually a Chick-fil-A in the Havener Center, which is open to the public, but it only has college hours. So it's like when the college is closed, the Chick-fil-A is closed. Um, I don't even think it's open on Saturday. I think it's only open Monday through Friday and only during like school days, you know. So when he went there and I, I told him, I was like, oh my gosh, you could bring me Chick-fil-A. Because Jim, I, I never went to go there because there's not like a convenient parking. And really since I moved here, it's never really been like, well, not really since I moved here, but since I've really fallen in love with Chick-fil-A, which is like just the last few years, um, just because I didn't have the opportunity to have it before. Um, just, just uh, you know, the last few years, I really haven't had the stamina to park far and walk in to go get my own Chick-fil-A. And Jim, was always kind of felt like uncomfortable going into places where he didn't feel like he belonged. Um, which I guess we're all like that in a way, right? So now that he has a reason to go to the Havner Center, he went and he brought me Chick-fil-A for dinner on the day of my MRI, which made me feel so much better. <sighs> However... <laughs> He bought me my favorite grilled chicken sandwich, but I haven't had that since uh, before I was doing like the keto and before I started eating gluten free um, because the gluten, I think, really does cause pain. Now, I did have pain yesterday, but I chalked it off to the fact that I did all that work at the MRI yesterday. But I'm wondering if the extended pain could be that I still am just dealing with it or it could be like the gluten has kicked in. 
I don't know that it's like, it's not bad for everybody. It's just that I feel like it hurts me more and I've noticed it tremendously. Like even as far as carbs are concerned, like I can have regular rice It's or I can have um, like rice pasta. It's It's really just the wheat and it's kind of like even the minimal amount of wheat. Like if I do chicken nuggets or chicken tenders or something, then it could be like disastrous. Um, so I try to do all like grilled stuff and uncoated stuff. That's why the keto stuff is good. Usually most of the keto stuff, I should say, is usually not coated in wheat. Now, keto bread, a lot of times, the zero carb bread is wheat bread because what they do is they actually up the fiber so that it ends up being zero net carbs, which I'm so happy for the people, but I just can't eat it anymore. It's just, it was funny because I, I think you guys, if you've been around a long time, you know that I was like kind of kicking the gluten for a while and I was started eating the gluten-free bread and I was telling you like I noticed the difference um I noticed the difference when I do actually have gluten like we would um <clears throat> have like the schnitzel or something with Aunt Helen's Parmesan chicken with like regular breadcrumbs and I would notice the difference I, I'm not trying to be paranoid and it was there was times where it didn't bother me if it was a, a minimal amount or if I I don't know if I had other factors going on. I don't ever know what the other factors are, but sometimes you're just like, what did I do? And you're like, you know what? I didn't do anything different except eat pasta or whatever it was. I couldn't really eat pasta, but you know what I'm saying? A whole wheat pasta, yeah. So um, I do find the whole wheat worse than regular, what like regular just wheat. This is weird. I don't know if that has anything to do with anything, but anyhow, I digress. Um, so I'm, I'm, I don't know if today's pain is just like gluten-free, not gluten-free, was the whole wheat bun like two days later, like 18, 36 hours late, or if it's just remnant, reminiscent, remin, remnants from, from the MRI appointment, which was two days ago, but I can't get comfortable. I am sitting, I'm laying here like this and I'm not comfortable. I just wanted, that's why one of the reasons that I felt like I wanted to talk on a vlog is to distract myself. Nothing else was really helping with the distraction. Sometimes I play cards. Sometimes I watch a movie. Sometimes I play on my phone and do TikTok, but really none of that was really distracting me. Um, but talking to you, I thought would be a good distraction. Drinking my coffee is a good distraction. I think I'm going to have my protein bar today. What's today's protein bar look like? Double chocolate crunch. Have you guys had this yet? It's like dessert. What I like to do sometimes is I like to put my peanut butter on it just to add like an extra bit of protein and an extra layer of flavor. This is so freaking delicious. It is like a candy bar, but it's so full of fiber and I totally need the fiber right now. Now, I will tell you, still haven't gone number two, but I do not feel bloated. I don't know. I know I, mean, I, know I don't eat a lot anymore, but... Other than that, like, back pain that kind of went away a little bit. Like, I had a lot of gas yesterday and the day before. So, I'm like, maybe maybe it was really just gas. Like, I don't know where the gas would have come from, but maybe it was just gas. Um, other than that, I feel much better. Like, my that one part of my back doesn't really hurt as much. It's kind of sore today. Like, when you have an injury that's gotten better. And then I was thinking maybe my back wasn't because I had to go to the potty. Maybe my back was something to do with something that I did. I don't know. It's, it's just it's that same pain that I've always had before. So I just assumed that's what it was. But then I was talking to Lisa and I told you guys yesterday. She said, welcome to 50. My body's doing things it never did before. She's like, welcome to 50. I miss the world. I miss the world. Uh, I want to just go sit on my couch. I just want to be able to go sit on my couch. And, and so before we found out about the fracture in my possible fracture in my femur, the doctor did say he could give me the shot in my hip. But then it got put on the back burner. But I don't really know that the shot in my hip will help me sit up. Because when I sit up, it actually feels like it's pulling my knee. Um, 
I just want to cry so much sometimes. You guys give me such a hard time. I mean, not everybody, but I'm such a crybaby. My sisters, I feel like my sister's just like, oh, enough already. But there's just so much going on that it's not my business to talk about that is really affecting me. My friends are going through things and I can't be there for them. And that's really, really hard. Because when you have a job like this, I was so excited to have a job where it's portable, where I could always just be there for my friends. You know, just get in my car and drive and figure out gas money on the way or there or later or, you know, it's what society created credit cards for, you know, I guess for emergencies, right? I um I don't know if like I wasn't really going through much psycho psychologically. I was really just being there for my friends. Like I really did just feel supportive. But I don't know if like the pain is making me emotional or if emotions are giving me pain. This morning I was super cold in this house and it was so weird because it was at five o'clock in the morning, it was 74 degrees outside, which is so warm for an overnight, even in August. I mean, it's almost September, but even in August, that's kind of hot for an overnight here where we live. And I know the whole country is going through this heat wave thing. So it's not like I feel like I have an exception to the rule at all. It's just that um, I was really cold. So then I was like, do I have a fever? Like, I was almost like I was chilled. And I was like, do I have a fever? And I took my temperature. And it's ele it was elevated for me because my normal resting body temperature is 97.1. And whenever I get like a 99, I'd be like, okay. Or a 98 or a 98.9, I'll be like, okay, that's a low-grade fever for me. Even though it's a normal range for everyone else. Um, like slightly elevated. That's what I would say. That's what I would tell the doctor. My, my, my blood, my, uh, temperature is slightly elevated, but a lot of things can explain that, you know, menopause can explain that. Um, but, um, it just was like, I, I didn't have the chills, chills, but I was just so cold this morning. And even after Jim, so when Jim got out of bed, I, I rolled over to his side just because it's usually more comfortable laying over there. You can actually still see the pillows past my shoulders, can't you? Right there, those pillows. I rolled over to his side so that I could like be more comfortable and I just crawled under the blankets and I was like, oh, I'm so cold. Just can't, I'm so cold. I just couldn't get comfortable and then I just couldn't get comfortable. So I felt my leg to make sure it wasn't hot, infected. You know, it wasn't like extra red it wasn't infected it's been swollen so it's like hard to say is it more swollen um it does hurt obviously but it's nothing there's no new like there's no new symptoms other than the increased pain today but again that could be just overdoing it like i might have really overdid it on monday um Yesterday was better today, which is weird. Mm. Um, excuse me. So I, um, I thought of a few things today. I'm going to work on my budget, my bill book, um, which will be the first time since I've been in the bed um today is the Alexa what's today's date it's Wednesday August 25th so you know I can now share gift ideas from Amazon's gift guide want to hear one now no thank you no problem if you'd like to hear it later just ask me for gift ideas today will be one month even though it's been four weeks, Sunday was four weeks that I was laying in bed. Today is one month since I hurt myself on the 25th. It was the first time I laid, I couldn't get out of bed. So in 31 days, I was out of bed 
not out of bed, obviously. I've been out of bed every day to go to the bathroom and stuff and exercise. But I mean, I've been out of the house two times in 31 days. I've been out of this room two times. Well, that's not true either because I didn't get the commode for a while. I don't know what I'm saying. I've been, I've been in too much pain to live my normal life for 31 days now. Some people are like, I don't know how you do it. And I'm like, honestly, I feel like everything else, just one day at a time, one moment at a time, one hour at a time. Yesterday was so long. That was the first day Jimmy worked all day. And it was such a long day here. Now, he, um, two, apparently Tuesdays and Thursdays aren't very busy for him. So he had a really good day yesterday, but was like tired at the end. Today he woke up, he said he didn't have a good night, a good night's rest, even though I look like when I was up, he was out, but he said he woke up at three o'clock or two fifty nine for like something woke him up and then he went to the bathroom and then he laid back down and went to sleep. But he said he just woke up tired this morning and he didn't know like he's like, I'm tired already and I said, I understand. You know, and then oh, I feel so bad for him. He went to go make my coffee. And, like, the Keurig got clogged and overflowed, and he had to clean all that up. When he came in with my coffee, I was like, how was your breakfast? He goes, I didn't eat breakfast yet. I was like, well, what was all that going on? And he told me about the machine, and I was like, listen, next time, and I'm I'm fine. I'm just like, next time, you can clean it up. I'm not saying don't clean it up, but don't make me another cup. Because if you risk the chance of it being clogged again, then I don't want you to have to clean it up twice. I said, if it clogs first, just make me cold brew or nothing at all. It's fine. I, You know, we can really, I can deal without it. It's not a, I love it and I, I feel like I need it, but it's not a 911. I'm not going to do anything. I don't need mental acuity today, you know, like laying in bed. I don't need that. Plus, I also have a, a latte protein drink. So it's caffeinated like a cup of coffee. I could always just drink that. Um, thank you for the latte coffee drinks. Oh, gosh. Um. So he is having is having a rough day already and I feel really I feel really bad. Today I was it was hard. Because not only did he struggle trying to do just the t couple of things for me that he does in the morning. He makes my coffee and he fills my water and then he comes in and puts the cream on my leg. Um I get the cream four times a day. He puts it on first thing in the morning because I'm so sore from not having it for like 12 hours that it really hurts to put it on. And then I put it on the other two times in during the day and then he puts it on before bed because at the end of the day, I'm exhausted and I can't really bend and flex like it hurts and a lot. So, um, so he does that for me. Um, and actually what else he does is I don't wash it off every before every reapplication I wash it I wash my leg once at the end of the day so I ask him like at night before we go to bed before you put on the nightly dose if we could I, I change my nightgown I wash up and he washes the area uh, really well so that I'm not having like layers and layers of the medication built up over weeks and weeks so or days and days it's really what I meant to say doses and doses was what I was trying to say but um Usually it's days and days because I can do the four doses on top of each other. It's just doing days and days worth. It's not really good. So, um, that being said, he usually just does my waters and my coffee and, um, then puts my medicine, medicine on. It's been working out the last two days, but today, of course, having that. And I was like, it really, it's not a huge deal. I was like, if mom, if mom knew, like, Mom could probably make the coffee because she knows how to use the Keurig. But it's really about like how much creamer to put in that is probably like where she would struggle herself. But I was like, mom can, mom offered to do all this stuff for me, so stop. One of the things this morning was like about filling my water. He's like, let me take your water. I said, leave it. Mom can fill my water. She already offered. I don't, I basically have one cup that I, you guys know I do like the water, drinking the 24 ounces of water in the morning. I started doing that again the, about a week ago and I leave that cup full during the day in case I have to refill like kind of like a backup water so I have my water bottle yesterday I had to fill up my Harry Potter water bottle that I keep on that side of the bed um so I used it but I, I don't need it today if she's here if I need water she can get it for me so it's really okay um 
so I just was like, leave it, baby. It's okay. I was like, and then I feel bad. So I feel bad not only him struggling, the, the things that he's doing for me are causing him struggles, but then I'm not there to help. So, like, if he was making his tea and the machine went kaplooey, I could be like, all right, I'll clean it up. You go eat your breakfast. Or if you feel like you needed to clean it up, I'll go heat your breakfast. Or whatever I can do to help his day go by smoother. So, not only is he struggling doing things for me, but then I can't be there to help. And that, my friends, was a whole new level of hard. Now, I knew this because him doing, like, all of the flooring and the renovating around the house, it was hard to not participate. But that was mostly, like, I want to say pride isn't the thing, but just, like, that's something that I love to do. I love to, like, lay floors and cut tiles and paint. I love to do that kind of stuff. I love home renovations. So that was, I was missing out on that. And that was more like a personal thing. That's what I was trying to say. That's why it's not, it's not pride. It was personal. But not being able to help him when he's struggling. Whole nother level. Whole nother level. Because I have been, like his back hurts. So I'll rub the back, I'll rub his back. I'll put his icy hot on. I can do all that still. You know, um. I haven't been really able to do his hair. I did it like one time sitting up, but he, he was like, it caused me too much pain. And he was like, no, it's okay. So now he's been doing it. Oh, sorry. Now he's been doing it himself. Um, which I, you know, he does a great job. So it's not like, it's just that I miss it. I miss being able to help him at least one, one, one thousandth percent of, the way he helps me out during the day, you know, it just, it made me feel like I was participating somewhat. Um, even folding the laundry, like when I first got bed bound, I would like fold the underwear and I match the socks because I couldn't sit up. And now he's like, no, I got it. And I'm like, at least help me some, let me help a little bit. Let me help the teeniest, tiniest bit I can help. And he's like, no, babe, just rest and got it. I don't want you to hurt yourself more. And Lord knows, let me tell you something. You, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I love to dance. No joke. Legit love parties. I'm the only, there, there are parties when I was the only one on the dance floor. I would be the first person. I'd be the last person. I'd be the only person. And I don't care. If the music's on and I want to dance, I freaking dance. I don't care about being by myself. I don't care about just me and two friends. I don't care about who's watching. I really don't. I was dancing at the third day concert and that's how I hurt my leg. So the, I told the doctor this is what happened. And the doctor, I think jokingly, but I'm not 100% sure he was, said, well, no more dancing for you. Because he said it like, well, no more dancing for you. Well, Jim got that. He heard that and that was it. And I will tell you sincerely, 100% sincerely, I have not gone dancing in 10 years. Now, I have danced. I won't lie. I, at Eden's wedding, I got a little inebriated and just got on the dance floor, but it was just like one or two, like, drop it like it's hot sessions, and that was it. But I miss it, and I've been disciplined. Like, it's like, other than being drunk and really, like, you have no inhibitions when you're drunk, but I was, I've been disciplined about it. I haven't been dancing, and... It's hard. It's hard. I miss it a lot. You guys see me car dancing where I'm like, you know, I want to be dancing. It's something that I love. I watch dancers on YouTube and I watch dancers on Instagram and I'm like living vicariously through them. And it's just really difficult. But that's one of the things I was trying to say is I've been disciplined. I've been disciplined. I, I tried to avoid me injuring myself again because Jim had said a lot of times he's like, I just don't want you to hurt yourself again. And I appreciate that now because obviously I didn't do anything to this. Well, I would actually, my knee started bothering me after we took mom shopping to Springfield. That was, that was what happened. Um, it was the first time in a long time that I had gone that much walking. And I just assumed that I had like muscle cramps because you get muscle cramps. And apparently I did something different. 
Um, that's when my knee started bothering me. People are like, why didn't you go right to the doctor then? Listen, when you've had chronic knee pain your entire life and previous surgeries on the area that's bothering you, you don't run to the doctor every time it starts hurting you. You wait it out. You rest. You do rice. Rest, ice, compression. like Just like you have a sprain, right? But you rest and you hope it gets better. You start doing your physical therapy exercises and you hope it gets better. Because, A, it's yeah, doctors are expensive. That's not even a thing. I have insurance, whatever. But the, the like, whole... Maybe they're going to give you medicine you don't want to take. Or maybe you're going to, like hear something that you don't want to hear. I got that. This pain, this like fracture pain, possibly the fracture has not been since May. Like my knee hurt in May, but the pain that I'm, the excruciating pain that I'm feeling now has only been for 31 days. Now it feels like it's my hip but now that I know if I may potentially have a fracture in my femur, then that's probably what's causing the pain in my hip. Because Lisa said, it exactly, she's like, you don't just wake up with hip pain because you have no cart. Like, you don't all of a sudden have no cartilage between your joints. And honestly, I've had experience, like, slight hip pain from time to time. Like, oh, I got off the couch wrong or whatever, that kind of thing. Or I sat too long. But really nothing to like go to the doctor about even. Just like, oh, I'm 50 and I'm going to have pains. Like that's really what it was like. But this, I told you, is unlike anything that I've experienced before. So obviously whatever it is, is what's going on is what's causing the pain. I just can't wait to find out what it is. Is it 9 o'clock yet? Alexa, what time is it? The time is 9.19 a.m. Oh, it's 9.19 a.m., which means I can hang up and call the office and see if they got my... <sighs> Actually, they they did request try not to call before 10 because the morning is always the craziest. So maybe I have some patience. I think I have a medication at 11. I don't know, maybe. It's just It's just like... Sorry. Um, it's just like getting answers, getting the answers that will give you the results to give you the treatment that you need, whatever it is. Do I need a cast? That's fine. Do I need a muscle relaxer to stop pulling on that hamstring? Maybe. Like, what do I need? Physical therapy. Better pain management. I'm not getting another shot in my knee because it really got worse since he gave me the shot in my knee. The feeling of my pain got worse since he gave me the shot in my knee. Now, it could be coincidental. 100%. It could be 100% coincidental because I actually used it a lot that day and then he gave me the shot. So, like, no, that doesn't make sense because the x-ray was before that. I was like, maybe I heard it. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Never mind. Never mind. I just know that it's been too long. It's been too long for me to live like this. I know we talked about the difference between the healthcare system here and the healthcare system in New York, but still, it's just been too long. So I'm looking forward to calling the doctor. I'm looking forward to call. I'm not going to have a mukbang. I just want to take a bite of this, but I wanted to show you the inside. That's why I want to take a bite. So this is an advance by, this is basically from Aldi. I think it's the Mill Millville brand. I think that's what it is. Oh, Elevation. Elevation by Millville. It's a advanced and it looks just like a candy bar and a protein bar at one. Oh, oh. you can't see that. There you go. So it's like chocolate crunch here and caramel and covered in chocolate. Thank you for letting me do that though. Today I felt like I'm hungry. And maybe that's it. Mmm. Eureka.
No, because I ate good yesterday. For me, anyway. Yesterday, I had a protein shake for breakfast at a uh, At 12 o'clock when I took my my pain medication, I had a quarter cup of peanut butter. Ow. At three o'clock I had a protein bar. And for dinner, I had like a taco salad. So I get this power bowl from Taco Bell. I get a power bowl from Taco Bell, but I customize it. I get no rice. I sometimes get the black beans and sometimes don't. It depends on my fiber level. And I know the black beans, beans can sometimes affect the leaky gut thing that sometimes can cause pain so I don't know if that was really it because I really didn't get to have many of the beans yesterday so if you've ever had a, if you've never had a power bowl from Taco Bell it basically is rice meat lettuce they put black beans on it and get guacamole or sour cream like you can get whatever cheese and like I said you pick your type of meat and tomatoes what I do is I say no rice I get seasoned beef. No, I get steak, a steak power bowl, but then I add seasoned beef. So I have two kinds of meat. They're really good together. I also add red sauce because I like the red sauce. Last time I got it with beans, but I what they do is when they make it, hopefully when they make it right, it's almost like sectioned off. Almost like when you, when you get like a, oh, like a taco bowl. I'm trying to think like the bowls, you know, like when you get bowls, like, you get like a chipotle, you get like a burrito bowl and it's like things are like sectioned off. Like here's the meat, here's the rice, like, well, the rice is underneath it, but here's the meat, here's the guacamole like that. Why am I thinking? Oh, a smoothie bowl. Couldn't think of a smoothie bowl. So like a smoothie bowl is like the smoothie there and then you get like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, whatever it is. So it's compartmentalized like that, which is good because then I get to eat like the lettuce portion. I knew I wasn't going to be able to finish the whole thing, which was fine because I don't mind having it left over. So what I did was I took some of the pieces of steak to have some protein and I ate it with the lettuce um, portion to have like a taco salad, I guess, or a steak salad. Um, and then I saved the other half for today. And I knew there was a couple of beans that I ate. So not really enough that I think it would cause this pain. But um, I ate well yesterday like I didn't starve myself yesterday well I don't starve myself oh my god that's gonna get backlash <sighs> sorry I ate well yesterday the day before the day of the MRI I only had the peanut butter and then I had the sandwich when Jimmy came home from getting his ID badge he brought me the sandwich and I ate it and then later that night I said to him I'm like I'm hungry <laughs> And I said, I'm sorry that I'm doing this to you. It's like seven o'clock at night and we're ready to go to bed. But I, I didn't eat enough today. And my stomach is letting me know. It was like. <laughs> so I, he said, what do you want? I said, can I just have some cold, uh, like some turkey cold cuts, like the cold cuts and a pickle. So I have a giant jar of giant pickles, but it's, they're really messy. So I've been asking him to like cut it into spears and just drain it off a little bit so that I can like eat it in bed without making a huge mess. And I do, he does it and it's great. So he's like, I, you don't have any more turkey. What would you like? And I was like, well, what do we have? And he's like, bologna and ham. And I was like, oh, maybe a little bologna and a little ham if that can, if I can, you know, cause I don't want either, a lot of either. Um, so he comes back and he goes, there was some turkey. So he's like, turkey's on the bottom. And he gave me one slice of ham and three slices of bologna. And my pickle. And that's what I had for dinner. Um, like before bed. And that was good. I mean, I was, you know, I've been trying to eat. Um, I'm still trying to maintain a calorie deficit so I don't gain weight. And I hopefully can continue to lose weight. But for right now, 
I'm eating better. Um, I've learned how to sit up. Well, I, well, not I've learned how to sit up. That that was that was like a weird thing to say. <laughs> I don't get as nauseated eating because I can sit up and eat. Is what I was going to say. I've also learned that if I can't sit up because like if my hips bothering me and I can't sit up, then I can sit up on my elbows and make my tract a little bit better so I don't get as nauseated. Part of that is because my pain medication is also keeping my pain at bay normally. And that's not making me nauseated. I wonder if that's why I was hungry today because I might have been headed towards that pain nausea that I get. That's possible. Yeah, that's possible. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys just hanging out with me. I do have a friend coming over tomorrow, which is great. So I'm glad that I'll have like vlogs done for that, uh, for that visit. I won't have to worry about vlogging on that visit because her privacy is important to her and she doesn't really want to be participating in the vlogs. Um, so, excuse me, um, I'm super grateful. I'm super grateful that I have somebody who can come hang out and visit. I hope I feel better tomorrow because I really would hate to feel like this and have somebody visit. Though it would be a good distraction, I probably would be very good company. Does that make sense? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Hmm. Hmm. That's the end of the coffee. Oh, I do have my coffee protein shake. Well, I'm going to end the vlog here. I know it's kind of random. I don't, again, I don't know if you'll see this, but you might. It wasn't too bad. I had a couple of teary moments, but nothing that, oh, sorry. I had a couple of teary moments, but nothing that I have to worry about. Um, I love you guys. I really do. And I miss crafting. I miss autumn. Autumn is here and I'm not. <laughs> sorry. I am going to be okay. Whatever happens, it will be okay. I'll be good again, and I'll thrive, and you guys will be here for it. And yesterday, Jimmy said something that really hurt my feelings, but it really didn't mean to. He's like, if you better, I put you to work. Get in there and clean that out. You got an office, to, a craft room to clean. And I was like, and he's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it like that. I was like, I know, but I just want to do it. And you have no idea how bad. And I just miss it. I feel like like today is a day where I just feel creative and I don't have any outlet for it. So I'm going to vlog, right? I'm going to talk about dancing and I'm going to be creative. And I have no outlet for it. And it's really making me crazy. I tried a sketch pad and I really can't position. Like I can't really draw up in the air. Um, I can't really draw up in the air and I can't really draw like lay on the bed sideways and do it. It's none of it's working. Nothing's working. Just everything's broken and I just feel it. And I'm so sorry that crying. I'm so sorry for crying again. Dang. We're two weeks from, just about two weeks from the anniversary of when Rob passed. It was like two weeks and two days or something. And I don't want to be in this bed. I want to celebrate him. I heard the most beautiful story this guy on TikTok said. I went into Walmart to get, this is his quotes, this is not my story. I went into Walmart to get some bottled water and who know that I was going to be uh, a part of a blessing. And he said, 
I was at the register self checkout and there was a lady with three young kids and the kids were, you know, well behaved and she was putting all her groceries in, you know, the kids were helping and she's putting all the groceries in and as soon as she scanned her last item, there was an older lady behind her who was like watching her. And she said, you know, he wasn't sure if like she was with her or whatever. So, um, as soon as she was done scanning her groceries, the lady came behind and stuck her card in there and paid for her items. And the lady was like, ma'am, I'm just, I, I'm going to pay for my stuff. And she said, she said, no, it's on me. She said, my husband died five years ago today. And I asked him when he was dying, what can I do for him? And he said, every year on the anniversary of my death, do a random act of kindness to a stranger in my memory. And I thought that was so beautiful. And I want to do that. I just want to do that for somebody. And I probably can do it from here. But I just want to do it out in the world. I think that that would be such a beautiful tribute. I know that. I know that my mom's luncheon celebration is a good tribute to her. But honestly, she was such a kind. I'm sorry. My mom's. Um tribute um of like luncheon that we do for her is um a really good way to honor her in memory but she was such a kind person who who often did random acts of kindness before it was a thing this would have been a great way to honor her too <laughs> You were going to see it or hear it. I thought hearing it would probably be better. So I just thought, oh, I've got tears on my pillow. I just thought that that would be like a really nice way to honor his memory. If I could just get out there. <laughs> So I have two weeks plus two days or whatever. Two weeks on the 28th. So that's three days. Two weeks and three days to get out there and start being on my feet again. I'm so look looking forward to life being normal again. Like I want to be like, oh, this is the new normal. Heck no, it's not. This is the new nightmare is what this is. Look, I tell you guys all the time, give yourself grace. God gives you the grace to handle things. Give yourself grace too. And I don't mean to get down on myself. I'm getting down on the situation. I am disappointed in myself with the whole MRI thing, but that's over. Let's move forward, but it's just really disheartening. I wanted to have answers by now and be on my road to treatment as opposed to just still waiting for answers. And that's not even something I can always control. I might not get all the answers from the MRI. We might not get all the answers from the MRI. There's other tests that people take when they can't get all the answers from something. I stopped using the big glasses because I had a pimple here and look, they were resting right on the pimple, but I started using them again today because it, it's better. Oh, hi. I mean, you can see it, but it doesn't hurt anymore, so. Somebody made a snide comment about the fact that I cry and then I can turn around and laugh the next second. And I'm like, welcome to my, welcome to my Irish Catholic family. I'm not saying every Irish Catholic family is like that. Just mine is. And that's why. I'm out of coffee, so I'm going to go. No, I'm just kidding. I really have to go to the ladies' room. So I love you guys. Thank you all for being here. And I'm sorry this was so randomly odd. 
blob type situation. I really look forward to when I can be engaged with you again. I want to do a live stream. I want to do finish the DIY that I had going. And especially now, there's just like all these things in my brain. And like, oh, I just need to get them out. I need to get it done. I need to get them out. I need to be there. I have so many things that I want to do that I can't. And it's making me nuts. All the antidepressants in the world today. No, I'm kidding. My antidepressants really working really well. Um, even though I still cry. Um, most, most of my cry is self-pity. That's not depression. <laughs> oh, these fruit flies. What is with the fruit flies? I don't have any fruit. What's going on? What's happening here? But listen, I love you. Thank you so much for everything. Your support, just hanging out with me. I do appreciate it. I love you guys. And as always, you take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.